Be sure, okay. Yeah, recording is on. Is on. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, well, uh, Dale and I put together a training sheet for the volunteers. Um, I put the link out on Slack. Uh, so you all should be able to access it. It's in the uh, uh, region captains comms channel. Um, it's uh, basically we followed, um, I think, the national uh, sort of uh, guidelines to, you know, what they wanted to make sure that everybody has uh, when they go out there and talk to people. Um, you know, the one thing that I thought was the most that that is really helpful is the the wiki. Uh, the wiki link the, that uh, Jerry Rowe put together. That thing is, that thing has got tons of information. You can spend days in there. You can get lost with all the information he has in there. And uh, the the link that I that's on the training sheet shows. We'll take you to a, a short little demonstration video that explains how how to uh, work your way through it. Um, I think the idea is that there's tabs for each of the uh, volunteers, uh, volunteer types, categories. Uh, at the top, there's a place for the name, uh, the DC and the RC, and the rest is pretty much up to the, uh, up to the volunteer to complete. Um, it should be pretty easy to monitor. Um, there's a tab to, or not a tab, but a, there's a cell that'll count uh, the number of uh, uh, dates completed as the volunteer goes through and steps through the steps through the uh, different um, training uh, videos or uh, reads. So uh, you know you. It's pretty. It should be pretty easy to monitor how everybody is doing. So you know, I'd like uh, if you all have access to it, or I can share the screen uh, to kind of go through it, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Let me let me see if I can do that. Me. I'm looking at it here, but I got a couple questions. Okay. Um, Tuesday training. Pardon? Tuesday training. What do you mean by Tuesday training? Are you talking about the webinar? Yeah. District captains. Um. That yeah that. That's uh, the uh, Tuesday training for for DCs and others. Jen, Jenny uh, Rapini also invites any volunteer activists to, to attend those. Okay. Okay. And um, COS Facebook Sunday. And Facebook Tuesday. I guess that's new to me. Shame on me, maybe, but what is it? <laughs> I, I I don't know. <laughs> maybe yeah, Dale, no. Dale might have an idea what that is. I don't yeah, those know. were those were links from the uh, training sheet. Yeah. yeah, between all the meetings we do, I haven't hit all of those either, but they're apparently they're available and they're out there. So yeah, they, those were those were um put out by the, you know, the guidelines that we got from uh, national to, to uh, you know, uh, encourage people to, well, I don't even remember, was that national, Dale, or was that just um, one of the no, other yeah. states? No, that came from Brenda. Uh, Brenda, okay. Well, yeah. I don't know. I've got the training sheet that I use 
for my volunteers, um, when I onboarded them, and I don't see those on them anywhere. So I was kind of curious if there's something on Facebook that I'm missing. Does anybody know? What sheet do you have that you're using now, Vicki? Uh, COS Indiana Volunteer Training. I don't know if you can see them. I printed them off. Um, yeah, I don't know how dated that is. Revised 12 5 of 2020. Yeah, so I guess I guess at this point what we're saying is this new one will supersede anything that's existed in the past. Correct. For, for Thomas for Thomas's benefit, Gary and Dale have approved this. So if, we, if you want things well, that's changed, a, then you know. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's just I, with that. I just want to know what they are because I maybe kind of like to watch them, but I've never heard of a couple of them. Access the training sheet and click on the link. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. Uh, I can't really see it. I can't. Really yeah, see that's what yeah, it yeah, looks like. It. Yeah. But we'd also need to know from the region captains what volunteer names should go on that sheet. Right. If, you know, um, it just like you guys have been sending me um, um, new DCs that you want to put on the DC training sheet. I put those on um, and get get that started for you. And then, you know, it's up to them. You know, they get they can get a copy of the link uh, for the sheet to update it. But, you know, um, the link to the sheet is going to be available to anybody that you give the link to. So nobody else will be able to access it unless you give them the link. I do have a question. Okay. Who's going to instruct these people on the legal contents of this, uh, of their job? No, I think you there's a couple. I think there's a couple of modules on there from the uh, from the legal side of things in COS University, aren't there? Yes, yeah. there is. There's a whole section. I went through that whole thing. Uh, what's his name, Jeremy or uh, Jared? There's Jared and Jason and, and about? Mike Ferris or Mike. Uh, what's his name? Can't think of his name. I think they go through the legal um, section. Is one of them's last name Kelly? Yep. Mark Kelly, I think. Yeah, I think that sounds right. Where's the legal section on this training sheet? I don't see it. Larry, were you able to, to to share your screen and show that sheet or no? Yeah, let me. Uh, or did Gary give you permission to do that? I think you can do that without my permission, but I'm not sure. Here we is go. This, this is different than a Zoom call. Hmm. Would it be in Gov 100? Would that have the legal stuff in it? Well, we can go to that. We could probably go to that. Well, I click on it and it doesn't open. So maybe it it's open. Just my phone. There's, uh, you see that now or no? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. Well, you know, I think it depends. It depends on, um, it might depend on the type of volunteer uh, that a person is going to pursue. Yeah, but the basic thing ought to be on there. Um, okay. Yeah, go up and look at that G, what is it, the GOV 100 or the introduction to volunteering? Constitutional literacy, that's what GO, let's see. Is. You would need. Yeah, that's constitutional literacy. That's states legal training. Uh, LG one hundred Convention of States legal training. You, that's that's just one, and there's also another that's in there, uh, which is cost three hundred <clears throat> Convention of States culture, and we can go down to cost four hundred, uh, which I myself think both of them should be on there. Yeah. Well, this is the one, though, that came from National. And so this is what National says is required for new volunteers. There's LG 200 is Convention of States Advanced <coughs> Legal Training. I don't know if you need to get new people into advanced. As I get my feet up off the floor. Yeah. I mean, we can run it past, um, past Brenda and see... But this was this was pretty recently updated by them. So this is what they felt at National was necessary to turn loose a new volunteer. Oh, well, I, I'm just I'm I'm just hoping that when they <clears throat> when we turn them loose, they don't. Uh, what's the word for it? Uh, Freak open out. Their, open their mouths and destroy us with uh, the IRS. Right. Right. Well, well, one section talks about the 401c3 and, and the other section, one is not for profit, the other one is. Yeah. So that, that, that's right in the beginning. Yeah, yeah that covers think, the basics of what that's they need. on there in the basic, that's for sure. So let's ask, let's ask about that. Y'all slack. There's too much in the COS 400, I think, for a volunteer. It's on the old sheet, but it, this is um, building relationships with legislators, and our volunteers aren't going to be doing that. True. The intro to volunteering class has a couple of segments on engaging local government, and I think those are, well, maybe they're not new. Uh, but those might cover some legal aspects. I'm not sure it's been a long time ago that I took that one. Let me take a quick look. But your volunteers, if the volunteer like the one I talked to just today. Now, if you have a volunteer like her, she's talking to everybody. And she's up in arms about everything. So, yes, you, you, I believe they all need the legal training and all the, this is what you can do and this is what you can't do. Well, you know, at the same time, if you put too much on them, you're going to, they're going to say this is too much. Mm -hmm. I think. Really? Did, I think that's uh, you know I'm not. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know. I, it's just from what other people uh, I've heard other people say. You know, a lot of people don't want it. They want to get out there and do stuff. They don't want to be sitting around taking fifty million courses. It's important to educate. I don't deny that. You know, but at the same time. So are you going to be keeping track of what the volunteers actually do? 
like you do the DCs? Well, I actually don't keep track of it. They're supposed to update that stuff themselves. I'll put them on the sheet. And, you know, I mean, if there's any, if there's any problems, you know, I can we fix never, that. We, we never checked on them before. I don't know, we should, my, though. In my experience, they get the most training when they work with their district captains and stuff at events. That's where they yeah, I mean, I mean, stuff. what we want to avoid, I called uh, I called a lady today who signed up to be a volunteer activist February of 2021. And whenever I called her today, that's the first time anybody in the States contacted her. Oh, well. yeah, I've run it's, into that situation in the past too. Yeah, that's, that's, the kind of, that's the kind of thing we want to avoid. We want to give people the, the basic information they have to get involved and to feel productive, uh, get them into Slack so that they can be in part of our communication and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and make sure that, that if there is training that they need to do, that they did in fact complete it. And, um, you know, and then we've, then we've done about all we can do, but we definitely want to, you know, we want to keep reaching out for that contact. And I was talking with, uh, with Gary about this and, um, you know, I, whenever I started, um, I went into citizen builder and, um, they, uh, Brenda helped me build a, a, a telepatriot, uh, mission for just me. And so I've got, region captains, district captains, and volunteers on there. There's about 160 people. And I've called about 70 of them so far. And a lot of them, especially the uh, in the volunteer ranks, you know, were, were maybe given a, a slip of paper, um, said hello to or whatever, and then they haven't seen anybody for months and months and months or heard from anybody. Now, either that is true or contacts are being made by all you folks and they're not going into the LMT because that's where we go to look to see if the contacts are made. And so, you know, it's really important that every time we talk to these folks, you go into the LMT, which is different than their profile and, um, you know, and write down whatever the contact was about, you know, so that we, uh, so that we know, otherwise we have a false impression about what is happening out there. I don't think the district captains can get into the LMT and they're the ones that are supposed to be going after these volunteers. I mean, I go after them when they're in the LMT, but I think I'm the only one in my region that has access to it. I think the district captain should have access to the LMT for people in their house district. Yeah, I think they do. <clears throat> yeah. Well, at least I did when I was a DC. Well, yeah. Diane yeah. Jones is really good, and I had her look for somebody and uh, people for her to get a hold of, and she couldn't see him. Is that well, it could have been a problem with the search or anything, you know. Pardon? Were they I said it could have been a contract with the role? Well, Gary Spielman, uh, when he goes to district dashboard and looks for people because he can't get in the LMT, or at least that's what he said. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe he doesn't know how, but he should. They were going, he was going originally to the um, follow-up, looking for people, but the problem is if you go in there on Fridays, the people that were there on Monday aren't there on Friday. Yeah. But if it's people that um, have an assigned role, they should be in the LMT. Well, I don't deny that because I see them there and I contact them, but I can't figure out why my district captains aren't seeing volunteers and then I got to do it. And when I talk to them, you? About it, they, they don't see them. Why don't you have a Jitsi call with him and have him walk him through how to get into the LMT and take a look and see who he sees there. Well, we did that at one of the meetings with the district captains at one of our monthly meetings. Hmm. And that's when we showed him how to uh, get the app on their phone to make their reports. He's making reports um, that he's contacting 
people that you know have signed the petition. That's who he's going after because that's all he can. He says he sees. He probably doesn't know how to get into the LMT and look and see who is in his uh, district that has applied for a role or that. Yeah, all those people. Those filters uh, can play havoc with you too. Well, I haven't seen anybody in the LMT in his district. Um, so that's. I mean, maybe he doesn't have volunteers in his district. Well, Could he has be. in the past, and, and I've gotten a hold of them and turned them over to him. But Vicki, maybe know. you and I can do a, a call and uh, talk about this and uh, figure out a time we can get Gary Spielman on a call with us and, and go through that. Right. Because there should be some people. In fact, let me just take a quick look. Yeah, Thomas, I'll follow up with um, Brenda and ask her about the legal training and ask her if they're sure that everything that they need is on that sheet. Oh, go ahead. Everything they need is on that sheet. And just because I might add a few extra things to their training doesn't mean anything. Well, you are a region captain, sir, so you can <laughs> yeah. do what you wish. I just, just want to know. It's, you I can just, do it the way you want to do it, pal. I just want to cover, you know, who's <coughs> behind. Oh, <laughs> Just one person's yeah. opinion. Well, you're the person that counts in your region, though. Yeah. You're the man. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <clears throat> Would that be former Mr. FBI? <laughs> oh, geez. Um, yeah, there are there are six people in Gary Spielman's district that are. Well, I'll take that back. There's about three besides him that are either volunteer activist, uh, telepatriot volunteer, or DC team. Uh, yeah, we can. Jenny, we'll talk Draper, about that. Who? Jenny Draper. Jenny Draper, Larry Wilkinson, and actually George Ward is in his district too. Well, George won't be when they in January, but um, yeah, it will all change when they get the new map done. Yeah, Jenny Draper, I've been in contact with her. She's kind of in and out. She's got her own business, and, and she's just too busy. She had good intentions. Yeah. I met her for lunch once. Um, but she didn't even have time to do the training. Be good to try to get her connected with Gary Spielman, although they don't live that close to each other, but they are in the same district. I have to look at the new map. I'm not sure they'll be in the same district when redistricting is done. Let me maybe I can take a look at that when I can put both maps side by side and see about that. But with any when any new volunteer activist, one of the good things to do is give them one specific thing to do ask them how long they think it'll take for them to get that done. If it's a week, then schedule a follow-up call with them for a week later and see if they actually get it done. And if they get one thing done, then you can give them another. And if, if it looks like they really want to follow through on training and so forth, then get them on that training sheet and, and start the process. But before you spend a lot of time with them, I would give them one thing to do and then follow up and see if they get it done. And that that tends to tell you, you know, something about their level of commitment. Well, I like to get Carla Bohr on that because um, she's already doing some training on her own. Uh, she doesn't have, you know, I told her just do what she could do on uh, in, um 
COS University before she got locked out of it. <coughs> so she said she's been, you know, when she gets time, she's been doing that. But I think she'll be a good volunteer. She did real well um, in Bluffton. Okay. Dale, I have a message for you from Hannah Montgomery. She's probably on your list of contacts to call, maybe. Okay. I think she said she got a message from you. Um, okay. She's on the district captain team for her district. Um, she is like busier than a lot of people. <laughs> um, but she's also planning to run for school board. So she's kind of taken a step back. So if you need to okay. mark her off your list, you can, you know, as contacted, you could. All right. We stay in touch on a regular basis. Now, I mean, not real regular, but um, you know, it's been hectic for her. Uh, Dale, did you see my note about Meg Stein? Um, yes. In Slack. Okay, good. And did you have some other things you wanted to cover tonight, Dale? Um, I don't think so. I mean, obviously, we need to we need to start um, populating that uh, that training sheet with the volunteers that that you guys have an interest in doing. Um, and then from just from, you know, just to re reiterate from my uh, experience making those phone calls, I think we really need to put some effort into reaching out to these folks on some kind of a regular basis. Um, I mean, I'm going to be hitting folks, you know, periodically. It's not going to be super often, but I know Jason Gerard and his calls, you know, he recommends that district captains be contacted weekly, you know, just to keep them fired up and see what they're doing and you know, to have a good dialogue with them and stuff. So, I mean, you guys all have to kind of depend or decide that thing on your own, but regular contact, I think, is going to be key to uh, to keeping, you know, as far as retention with these folks. So, however that's done, I think that's a challenge for us because there's too many folks that are sitting out there that have lacked contact for, for months on months, and um, we're not going to be able to keep them if that's how we handle them. You're right. You know, good point, Dale. Uh, tell me, guys, how does this Tuesday at eight o'clock? How does this work for people? Should we make this a permanent time to meet? Don't all speak at once. <laughs> I don't think it's okay so. for me. I mean, it's okay right now, but I don't think anything could be permanent <laughs> because we used to have them on Tuesdays and it switched. Then we switched to Mondays. So temporarily permanent. Yeah, why did we switch to Monday? We changed to Monday because it, it was one less day for, for us to have to be on a call. Right. I think that's yeah. what happened. So you, you have the, the uh, COS live at seven and then the region captain call at eight, but you have Tuesday off to make calls. I don't know. I think that's what we talked about. That might be, I, I can't recall. Well, that's the best of my recollection. <laughs> and why exactly do we want to move or need to move? Yeah, the inter I think the interference, uh, might have been the me. Training. I up the fact that uh, through October, every Monday night is a training night on uh, citizen building. Citizen building. Mm -hmm. But yeah. really, it's it's repetitive. There are only four classes, one through four, and then she repeats them, and they're always done chronologically. And you can join uh, anytime you want. So it, it's. For me, it's only going to be 
uh, well, I'd like to take uh, one of them over again, but for me, it's only going to be three more. Um, and then I would be, you know, wouldn't have any conflict with Monday. I just wanted to take those four courses and I mentioned that to Gary. Yeah. Yeah. And her classes are always on Monday. Yeah. Right. And, it's yeah okay. and then she goes dormant until after basically, I think she starts up again in March. Uh, once the legislatures, most legislatures uh, are finished by the end of March. And uh, then she goes back to training whatever she's going to train on. Okay. I've got a couple of weeks I want to do to finish up, too. All right. Well, let's stick with this uh, Tuesday night for the next three weeks, and then we'll make a decision about what to do longer term. Uh, Larry, have you been able to connect with Rich Jeffries? Uh, yes, uh, but only by Slack. I, uh, he hasn't uh, responded to a phone call. Uh, he's out of town again. Uh, so I haven't given up on him, I guess is uh, what I would say, but he's not doing anything. But indicates when he emails me on Slack, well, personally, uh, that he has two other people that he wants to bring to the table that he thinks are interested in being on a team with him. So on the one hand, he seems to be somewhat busy, somewhat interested. On the other, he hasn't made a couple of uh, meetings that I've called. Okay. Why don't you make, make sure you make notes in the LMT about your contacts with him and uh, we'll keep him on for now and uh, try to get, you know, keep him moving forward. If nothing happens, then at some point we got to decide, you know, probably just to reject him. Um, well, I, I was ready Slack, to reject him and then he sent me a, a very uh, informative email and said he was going to bring two people to our next meeting. <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you never know, do you? No, not really. Well, I always like to give people as many opportunities as uh, as seems to be reasonable. You know, try to get people activated. Yeah, I was I, I was uh, curious too if if uh, Gary if Thomas had any more comments on the Daryl Boggs on that resignation, which I thought was kind of interesting. Oh, <laughs> I, I have uh, I have all eighteen pages of their back and forth uh, from. Uh, Oh, was that your text messaging, Thomas? I haven't had a chance yeah. to read it yet. Yeah. It Thomas be. sent me 18 pages of notes, and I would like to look at it. I mean, it, it, sounded, it sounded to me like the bottom line issue was he was wanting to recruit young people, and he thought that we were too focused on Christianity, which a lot of the younger people aren't interested in, and so he wanted it to be more of a secular approach. Am I wrong there, Thomas? No, um, you're not wrong. He, so he, that's the reason I mean, why he uh, decided to split ways because he just didn't think that we could maintain any type of what's the word for it targeting of our initial goal if we don't bring new people in but if we chase the new people away with our um Christianity type deal. Who are you talking about? One of my DCs that resigned. Oh, he was a DC for about a week or two and then resigned. <laughs> he took the servant yeah. leadership course, and that's when everything started to go downhill. Yeah. 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 As far as I'd be concerned, if you take the servant leadership course and you don't feel like that you could fit into that, then he probably isn't a good fit for us. Great. Right. Sayonara. Right. Goodbye. There's there there is uh just like I was told it there's other servant leadership textbooks. Mm -hmm. There are there are ones that are based on the Greenleaf scenario, which takes in uh what's the word uh religion. 
the religion point of view, and there's others that just don't even touch it. Yeah, I think we use that one because we like everybody to be on the same page. But yeah, I understand. Well, I will look at his notes and I'll share them with you, Dar or uh, Dale, if you want to. I want to share my screen and show you guys two things real quick, okay? Yep. So this is, can you see my screen now? Yes. yes. If, if it's too small, toggle your view. I think you can toggle the view. So uh, instead of seeing larger pictures of people, there'll be smaller pictures and a bigger picture of my screen. In the uh, Slack, I pinned another page here. So the, at the top of the region captain comms channel, there's the link that's pinned for the Gypsy Meet. Okay. There's also a new one that I just pinned called Past States Activities. This is a page that Jonathan and uh, Brenda put together that has a huge list of activities and resources that are designed for past states and uh, if you need for example the petition for past states as opposed to non-past it's here uh, a i think uh, you know presentation you can use uh trafalgar group poll all all kinds of things on there and if there's something else that you think you need if you let brenda or for Jonathan, no, can probably get that added. Nice. But in any case, the link is pinned at the top of the Region Captain Comms channel. Okay, cool. Thank you. Very good. So, uh, I think that covers everything I had. Does anybody else have anything else they want to cover tonight or get an answer to? Yeah, I do. Um, I just wondered how many of you are aware of the health commission that Governor Holcomb established last year and what they're doing. No. Well, they've been meeting since September of last year. I'll just read you what it says on here. I belong to all these groups on Facebook, and this happened to show up in one of my parent groups. It says the Public Health Commission was instituted in 2021 through an executive order by Governor Holcomb to address public health in Indiana. The commission first met in September of 2021, outlining key areas of public health, including emergency preparedness, governance and structure, funding, data and information integration, healthcare and public health workforces, and childhood and adolescent health integration. Monthly meetings drive the goal to develop regionalized, equitable, and sustainable legislative recommendations for public health to be presented during the 2023 session. And basically they're wanting to um, send the control at the state level for healthcare decisions. So all this masking that happened before, um, what that would mean for us would be you can't opt out. You know, there were counties that did not comply with the mandates. Um, there are schools, uh, school corporations that did not comply with the mandates. And they technically, um, if it had been a legality thing, um, they should have had lost their funding, the ESSER funds. Um, but none of that happened because none of it was um, actually a law. What we about were, uh, uh, private schools? Um, they would be affected too. Everybody would be affected. Every mm -hmm. citizen. And they were laughing about um, how they would lovingly guide us through our ignorance. <sighs> so I saw video of them while they were meeting. Is this something that has to go through legislation, though, doesn't yes. it? 
but that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to decide what they're going to introduce into the next legislative session. And that's the way Cheryl, I read it. Cheryl, were you able to get in touch with uh, uh, Marty about this? No, I was going to call him today, and then um, we decided we had to leave. So <laughs> I've okay. been calling him today. Is, is it we specific? Will, uh, I think we'll be talking about this again, but this sounds like an issue that we are going to want to let our legislators know in the upcoming session Yes, in no uncertain terms that we do not want greater state control of health care. We need less uh, government. We don't. Do we don't co-parent with um, the government and we don't co-parent with school corporations. Yeah. So the, the decisions that are made for children, especially their health decisions should be parents. No, we are not a nanny state. Or we should well, a lot of that, a lot of the emergency authority was taken away from governor and this would be his way of bypassing that. Exactly. I don't agree with those executive orders one iota. They shouldn't even be allowed. Yeah, I agree. So. So did it specifically say masks or was that just something that would fall into one of those buckets? It would fall into one of those buckets. It doesn't so, say anything about masking, but um, you can go to, uh, let's see, um, the governor's public health commission website um, I would imagine you could find that under indiana.gov or in.gov um, under the governor's section. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't actually gone through to look for more, but this came from Hoosiers for medical liberty.com uh, hey, that I printed out. I also got, I also got an email from Stanford health freedom that, uh, indicates that what uh, Indiana law requires uh, all graduates' transcripts to reflect their vaccination statuses. Yeah, see, so that's all kinds of wrong. They, I think they couldn't graduate unless they got vaccinated. That's crazy. But it's on their transcript, and that's, to, to me, that's totally wrong. That is a violation. That's of a HIPAA. Privacy. If anything, it would, but it would be that way, yeah. Well, I don't think they care about HIPAA anymore because they don't care about anything. Well, exactly. If it's the if it's legal, they don't care about it. I don't know. My my oldest granddaughter graduated from high school and attended her first year of college, and she's never been vaccinated. I well, have, maybe it depends on the school. I know IU were real sticklers about yes. getting yes, vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And IU Health, my brother works for them. Um, they were, you know, they fired people for not complying. Right. Yeah. Right. It, it might depend on the school right now. And maybe that's what they're trying to override. And it's well, not it's just the COVID vaccine. Christian, it can be any of the vaccines. Christian mm -hmm. University and... Um, she graduated from Huntington North, so that's probably why. Well, they're going to keep pushing until, you know, we just completely fall down and submit. So we've got to stand strong <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Oh, and something yeah. else I forgot to say last week. Um, let's see. I guess it was last Monday. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, I got my official statement in the mail for running for school board. I am on the ballot. Oh, my girl. Yay, congratulations. Good for you. I'm pretty excited. Um, I, I, I hope it goes well. Uh, we'll just see what happens. Good for you, Cheryl. Well, folks, I think it's, uh, it's about 10 till. Uh, Dale and I have another call in 10 minutes, so I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you for coming on, and if I can assist you in the meantime, uh, let me know. Otherwise, um, I will see you next week, and I'm going to stop recording now.